Praise the Lord. Holy Ghost filled people, I said, praise the Lord. And the Lord make us living sacrifice in Jesus' name. Where I saw us, we pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we well, thank you for this hour. Thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. We pray that you enlighten us once again in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, everywhere you send us, we will go. What you tell us to do, we will do. And the power you have given us will never fail us in ministry in Jesus' name. And may our sacrifice and service be acceptable to you all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I want a good resounding amen. Praise the Lord. I know you might be tired by now. You've been on need since the morning. But I had you praying the other time. I said, wonderful. Our people are not tired. Uh, am I telling the truth about you? I said, you are not tired. The strength of the Lord will abide with you every time in Jesus' name. Now we come to Romans chapter 9, Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 11. You might wonder, why do we group those chapters together? Chapters 9, 10, and 11. Because the chapters are speaking concerning Israel, the Israelites, the Jews. You see, Paul the Apostle had been going systematically. And Paul the Apostle had been emphasizing on the area of the Jew and then the area of the Gentile. And he has brought grace very clear, faith very clear. And he has told us that circumcision means nothing. That what's important is being a new creature in Christ. And that now, in that newness of life, by the Holy Ghost, by the grace of God, and by the penetrating power of Jesus Christ, who is present, who is prominent, who is prevalent in every life, that we should live in newness of life. But now, he wants to address the case of Israel. Look at this. you find in chapter 9, Israel, 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 chapter 9, verse 4. Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants, the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Look at verse 6. Not as though the word of God has taken no effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Look at verse 27. Isaiah also cries concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Then you look at verse 31. It says, But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, has not attained to the law of righteousness. You can see that chapter, chapter 9, is concentrating on Israel. And he's telling us various things about Israel. Look at chapter 10. Chapter 10 verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, but I say, did not Israel know? First, Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy. By them that are no people, and by a foolish nation, will I anger you. Look at verse 21. But to Israel, he says, all day long, have I stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Chapter 10, talking about Israel. How about chapter 11? Chapter 11, verse 1. 
I say then, as God cast away his people, God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham and of the tribe of Benjamin. Look at verse 2. God has not cast away his people which he foreknew. What she not, know ye not? What the scripture says of Elias, Elijah, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel. Look at verse 7. What then? Israel has, far, has not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election has obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Verse 25. In verse 25, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. Verse 26, And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, they shall come out of Zion, the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob, that's still Israel, from Israel. And so you can see, as we run through those three chapters, we're talking about Israel. And this is revelation about Israel. The chapters reveal the mystery of Israel's, number one, relationship with God. Number two, religion. Talks about the religion. Number three, talks about the rebellion. Number four, it talks about the reprobation. How they turned back. How they went away from the Lord. It talks about, number five, their rejection. They have rejected the way. The way of light. The way of righteousness. And the way of faith. Number six, their restoration. That eventually there will be restoration for the children of Israel. And then it talks about the redemption, the redemption of the remnant. So as we look at these uh, three chapters, it's talking about Israel. And uh, this is not uh, something strange. Jesus Christ emphasized that. We come to John chapter 1. John chapter 1, reading from verse 9. John chapter 1 verse 9 that was the true light capital l jesus christ that lighteth every man that cometh into the world he was in the world christ jesus the messiah the redeemer the savior he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not verse 11 he came unto his own and his own received him not. That's the Israel. Those are the Jews. He came to them. They received him not. Chapter 5, verse 44. John, chapter 5, reading from verse 44. It says, how can ye believe? Talking to the Israelites, talking to the Jews. How can ye believe? Which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. Matthew chapter 13. Reading from verse 15. Talking about Israel. Their rejection. The light came. They rejected. The gospel came. They rejected. Christ the Savior Messiah came. They rejected. And we're looking at Matthew chapter 13 verse 15. For this people's heart is wax gross. And their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes, they have closed. Underline that in your Bible. There are some people that will tell you it's God that blindfolded them. There are people that will tell you that those covenant people of God, it was God that sealed up their hearts that they could not receive the gospel of the light. But it says their eyes, they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. And should understand with their hearts. And should be converted. And I should heal them. In John chapter 8. 
Christ talking to them. John chapter 8 verse 24. In John chapter 8 verse 24, I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, those Jewish people, Israelites, if you do not believe that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. We're looking at verse 41. In verse 41, ye do the deeds of your father. Then they said unto him, We be not born of fornication. We, be, we have one father, even God, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you will love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. He's talking to the Jews now. He's talking to Israel now. Ye are of your father the devil. And the laws of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speak, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. And you'll see as Jesus Christ talked to the Jews. He was telling them. They were the covenant people of God. Normally, they should have been expecting the Messiah. Isaiah spoke about him. Jeremiah spoke about him. And all those prophets spoke about him. And when Herod was asking where he will be born, the priest they told him, it's in Bethlehem. But now when he came and brought the ministry, they rejected. Eventually, at the end of the ministry of Jesus Christ, in Matthew chapter 23, Matthew chapter 23, we're reading from verse 37, Israel, Israel. We're looking at Matthew chapter 23 and verse 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens uh, under her wings and ye would not and uh, we need to make it very clear that the lord said i would have gathered you that's what i came to do i came to call you to repentance i came to call you to redemption i came to call you to fellowship and relationship with god i would have gathered you under my wings but ye would not behold your house is left unto you desolate. And that's what Paul the Apostle is emphasizing as we come to Romans chapter 9, chapter 10, and chapter 11. Acts of the Apostles, I'm reading from, verse, uh, from chapter 13. Acts of the Apostles, we're looking at chapter 13. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13. And here we're reading from verse 38. It says, be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, Jesus Christ, is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you, which is spoken in the prophets, behold, ye despise us. And wonder and perish. For I walk a walk in your days, a walk which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached unto them. The next Sabbath, now when the congregation was broken up, Many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And then you read from verse 45. But when the Jews, here they are, when the Jews saw the multitude, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul contradicting and blaspheming listen to this 
Then Paul and Barnabas was bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing, listen to this, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turned to the Gentiles. We turn to the Gentiles. You judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life. You turn away from the watch of life. Not predestination. It is not that God said, no, I don't want them to get saved. No, it was their choice. Yes, God knew they will do that. But his knowledge did not force them. They were the people that chose the wrong thing. Acts of the Apostles chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 25. Acts of the Apostles chapter 28 verse 25. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After the Paul had spoken one word, well speak the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto these people and say, Hear me, ye shall hear, and ye shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive, for the heart of these people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing. Listen to this, listen to this, and their eyes tell me, and their eyes tell me out aloud. Uh, uh, say it in such a to register on your mind. And their eyes have they closed. They were the people that closed their eyes. They were the people that sealed themselves for doom and damnation. Not God, not God. God wanted them saved. That's why he sent all the prophets to them. He sent all the preachers to them. But it says their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes. And hear with their ears. And understand with their heart. And should be converted. And I should heal them. Verse 28. Be it known therefore unto you. That the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles. And they will hear it. You are gentle. You have heard the gospel. We are Gentiles, we have had the gospel. And we have received that gospel. And the gospel is doing wonders in our lives. And the wonders will never cease in Jesus' name. We are looking at the final redemption of Israel's faithful remnant. As we look at these three chapters, from chapter 9, it begins to tell us about the revelation of their rejection. How they rejected. And then he goes to chapter 10 and he tells us about their self-righteousness, worthless religion. And now as he comes to chapter 11, he tells us about the redemption of the remnant. The redemption of a remnant, a part of Israel that will believe. We're coming to chapter 9, point number 1. The sobering revelation of Israel's rejection. Point number one, that's chapter nine of Romans, the sobering revelation of Israel's rejection. Point number two, that's chapter 10, the self-righteousness in Israel's religion. The self-righteousness in Israel's religion. Yes, they had religion. But in the middle of that the religion, the center, the circumference, every part of the religion of the children of Israel, self-righteousness. We come to point number three, chapter 11, the sure redemption. The sure redemption of Israel's remnant. Chapter 11, the sure redemption of Israel's remnant. Let's come to point number one, the sobering revelation. Of Israel's rejection. As you look at this chapter, Romans chapter 9. This Romans chapter 9, we divide to three parts. Number one, Paul's concern for Israel's salvation. 
He was an Israelite himself. And you have the first part, verses 1 to 8. Paul's concern for Israel's salvation. Number two, in that chapter 9, from verse 9 to verse 24, present confusion of irreversible selection. Present confusion of irreversible selection. Number three, in that chapter 9, proper consideration of Israel's stumbling stone. The proper consideration of Israel's stumbling stone. Come to number one. Paul's concern for Israel's salvation. We're coming to Romans chapter 9 and we're reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 9 verse 1. I see the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great happiness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ. For my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertains the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the sacrifice and the service of God and the promises, whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. And everybody shout, Amen. Not as though the watch of God are taking on effect. For they are not all Israel, who are which are of Israel. What it means is those who are circumcised outwardly, they count themselves as Israelites, but really they are not, because he is a Jew that is one inwardly, circumcised in the heart, in the spirit, not in the flesh, whose praise is of God. That's why I said, not as though the word of God has taken effect. But they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. Are they, the ch are they all children? But in Isaac, shall thy seed be called? That is, they which are the children of the flesh. These are not children of God, but the children of promise accounted for the seed. You see from verse 1, he was concerned for the salvation of Israel. And he said, if I could have given my own salvation to them, and then I become accursed from Christ, if that will help them to have salvation, I would gladly, joyfully have done that. That's the same heart Moses had for them. Exodus. Exodus. Chapter 32. In Exodus chapter 32, you see the concern. The concern of a leader. Passionate concern. That these Israelites will belong to God. In Exodus chapter 32 verse 31. And Moses returned unto the Lord. And said, oh, these people have sinned a great sin. And have made them gods of gold. Yet now. If thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written. His name was in the book of life, and he wanted the children of Israel, all of them in their millions in the wilderness, who have seen, who have gone, worshipping idols. He said, have a great concern, have a great passion. Have a great desire that these should still be counted as the people of God. And yet, they didn't have that covenant faithfulness that will make them keep with the Lord. And so Paul the Apostle expressed concern. Look at Hosea chapter 4. In Hosea chapter 4, we're reading from verse 17. Hosea chapter 4. Reading from verse 17, Ephraim, that's another title name for Israel. Ephraim is joined to idols, let him alone. Ephraim is joined to idols, let him alone. But now come to chapter 11, come to chapter 11 and verse 8, you see the concern. 
they are reprobates they have gone away from the lord and the lord said enough is enough ephraim is joined to idols let him alone but look at verse uh, chapter 11 verse 8 Hosea, how shall i give thee up ephraim how shall i give thee up ephraim is done enough to merit rejection and yet god is saying how can i give ephraim up how shall i deliver how shall i deliver thee israel how shall i make thee as adman how shall i see thee as zeboim mine heart is turned within me my repentance my re my repentance are kindled together that was the same kind of mind and the same passion and the same desire that paul the apostle had but then let's look at what hindered them why is it with all that concern on the side of god on the side of the prophets on the side of the apostle yet they remained in their rejection of the gospel second part here present confusion of irreversible selection present confusion of irreversible selection that means god has chosen us god has selected us we are elected people and whatever we do god cannot turn away from us because there is their understanding of their irreversible selection let's let go now from verse 9 romans chapter 9 verse 9 but there is the word of promise at this time will i come and sarah shall have a son and not only this but when rebecca also had conceived by one even by her father isaac for the children listen to this be not yet born, neither have done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. The search the Lord made the choice even before those children were born that the elder shall serve the younger. We're looking at Genesis. And we're looking at Genesis chapter 25, verse 23. Genesis chapter 25. And we're reading from verse 23. Now you will understand why the thought there was irreversible selection in chapter 25 verse 23 and the lord said very important unto her two nations are in thy womb two nations are in thy womb and two manner of people not persons not persons two manner of people nations shall be separated from thy bowels and the one people nation shall be stronger than the other people nations and the elder the nation coming from the elder will serve the younger will serve the nation of the younger the nation coming out of esau will be higher will be greater will have great privileges that i will not give to the nation coming out of esau when it says the younger and the elder shall serve the younger in the history of esau and jacob esau did not serve jacob as a servant as a lower person jacob said get this from me because i have enough and Esau said, keep what you have, I have enough. And he was an airy man. He was a strong man. He was a militant person. He had all these 400 coming with him. And Jacob was afraid of him. He never served Jacob. It's not personal, it's national. 
the promise that God gave to them as a nation, they thought it was for the person. And when it said, the elder shall serve the younger, that's what, how they interpreted it. Come and look at this now, chapter 9 of Romans, verse 13. In Romans chapter 9, verse 13, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. That's another misunderstanding of the thing that God had said about Jacob and then about Israel. The hatred here is not the hatred of bitterness. In the language of the Jews, whenever you prefer one person above the other, that preference in, the, in their terminology is referred to as hatred. Jesus used that language. And it didn't mean bitterness, it just means preference. Look at Luke chapter 14. In Luke chapter 14, we're reading from verse 26. Luke chapter 14, verse 26. If any man come to me and, what's the next word there? Hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. It's not the hatred of bitterness. I'm bitter towards my father, towards my mother, and I'll not do anything with them. I'll not give them anything because I'm a disciple, because I must hate father and mother and brothers and sisters. I must hate myself. Does that mean he wants me to commit suicide? I don't love life? No. What he means is preference. I prefer this to that. I prefer Christ. I lift up Christ above father, above mother, above the husband, above wife, above the brethren, above the sisters. I exalt Christ above myself also. In uh, talking about the blessings of God, God gave Esau blessings. It's not the hatred of bitterness. It's not the hatred of rejection. It's not the hatred that if he claims my promise and wants to be saved, he cannot be saved. No, not at all. It's a preference that I'm going to choose a nation. Through that nation, Christ will come. I'm going to choose a nation. I'm going to deposit my oracles, my word, onto that nation. I'm not going to give the oracles, the commandment. I'm not going to give the revelation. I'm not going to give that to two nations. I'm going to give to only one nation. And I prefer Jacob. I prefer Israel. I prefer the Jews so that I will make them carry my ordinance and my word unto the rest of the world. As for Esau, I'm not going to give that to him. I don't prefer him. I prefer Jacob. That's the meaning of Esau have I hated and Jacob have I loved. But look at Deuteronomy chapter 2. Deuteronomy. We're looking at chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 2. Are you there? I said, are you there? Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 2. And the Lord spake unto me saying, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn you not what? And, com and command thou the people saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of, tell me out loud, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir. And they be afraid of you. They be afraid of you. The people that came out of Esau. And the people that came out of Jacob. The children of Esau, descendants. They were afraid of the descendants of Jacob. It says, they shall be afraid of you. Take you good heed unto yourself. Therefore, meddle not with them. Descendants of Esau. For I will not give you of their land. 
I'm not going to treat them as the Canaanites, as the Jebusites, as the Hivites that I said, go and possess their land. This is Esau. It's only that I prefer Jacob to Esau in the area of giving my covenant, in the area of giving the word, in the area that my son, my only begotten son, will come through the lineage of Jacob. But as for the normal blessings, may do not with them. Fire, I will not give you their land. No, not so much as a foot breast. Because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. And so the children of Israel, they need to understand. They modeled up everything. Esau, have I hated? And Jacob, have I loved? And then now we come to chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. And I'm reading here from verse 17. For the scripture says unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose, have I raised up, have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Uh -huh, there are some people that will say, you see what God did? He didn't allow Pharaoh to have a mind of his own. He didn't allow him to be a free moral agent, because the Lord himself, he decided, I will harden him. I will not allow him to give response, a good response to the word that I'm going to give. Well, look at the story. Exodus chapter 5. Exodus chapter 5. I'm reading here from verse 2. Exodus chapter 5. We're looking at verse 2. Pharaoh started it originally. And Pharaoh manifested that rebellious spirit originally. Look at this. In verse 2, chapter 5. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? That I should obey his voice to let Israel go. I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Uh, let's look at chapter 8, verse 15. Exodus chapter 8, verse 15. It says, But when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, tell me what follows. Tell me out loud. Read it properly. He hardened his heart and hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said, look at verse 32, verse 32. And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also. That word also means he did it before, he did it before, he did it before, he's doing it again now. And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also. Neither would he let the people go. Chapter 9, verse 34. Chapter 9, verse 34. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were seized, he sinned yet more and hardened his heart. He and his servants and the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. Neither would he let the children of Israel go as the Lord had spoken by Moses, he was responsible. He had in his heart eventually. Because he had had in his heart and he decided that is what he was going to do. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. Pharaoh has had in his heart. Yes, I approve of that. I seal that. I sanctioned that. Because he started it and God said, that's all right. That's what you want to do. Go ahead. First Samuel chapter 6. In First Samuel chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 6. First Samuel chapter 6. And here we're reading from verse 6. Telling us about Pharaoh. How the other people of the gentle perceived it. First Samuel chapter 6. We're reading from verse 6. Wherefore then do ye harden your hearts 
as the Egyptians and Pharaoh had in their hearts when he had wrought wonderfully among them. They did not let the people go and they departed. We're coming to the New Testament now. And we want to see the people themselves of the New Testament. That is the Jews. Their attitude. Did God hinder them from believing? Not so. Did God say, no, I won't give you eternal life? Not so. Did Jesus say, I'm not going to be of benefit to you? No, not so. They were free moral agents. As they rejected and rejected and rejected over and over, the Lord said, all right, that's what you want to do. He even wept over them. Why would he weep over them if his father hadn't them? If his father hindered them from believing, it was their choice. And so we read from John. We're looking at John chapter 12. John chapter 12, we're looking at verse 37. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. That the saying of Isaiah, the prophet may be fulfilled, which is big, Lord, who has believed the report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord be revealed. Therefore, they could not believe. Therefore, they could not believe, because Isaiah said again, he has blinded their eyes. They closed their eyes first, and God said, that's what you want. That's the state you want to be in. All right. And he has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts. That they should not see with their eyes. Nor understand with their heart. And be converted. And I should heal them. Look at how Matthew records that. Matthew chapter 13. Reading here from verse 15. Matthew Chapter 13, quoting the same Isaiah. Chapter 13, verse 15. For these people's heart is what's gross. And their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they, should, they shall see with their eyes. And hear with their ears. And should understand. And with their hearts, I shall be converted, and I should heal them. Now, as we conclude chapter 9, the third part, proper consideration of Israel's stumbling stone. The proper consideration of Israel's stumbling stone. I'm reading from verse 25, Romans chapter 9, verse 25. As he saith also in Osi, Osiem, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and had beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass, in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, they sh shall, they shall they be called the children of the living God. It's talking about Gentiles there. The Gentiles that did not belong to God. The Gentiles that they were not the people of God. He said in that same place. In that same Gentile land. Where they told them you are not children of God. Grace will come to them. Mercy will come to them. His compassion and love will come to them. And they will receive. As I also cried concerning Israel. Concerning Israel. Concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. The Lord foresaw, the Lord saw that they will not amass as a nation, receive his only begotten son. And yet he said, a remnant, a part, shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short. A righteousness because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth 
had left us a seed. We had been a Sodom and be made like unto Gomorrah. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles we followed not at a righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which shall fail. How did they get that? Oh, because they knew they were worthless. They knew they were idolaters. They knew they were abominable. That's why they could say, nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I clinch. They knew, God, my tears forever flow. God, my zeal no respite no. All this for sin cannot atone. And so we come for the free gift of the grace of God. But Israel, verse 31, which followed after the law of righteousness, has not attained the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Why? What happened? How did they miss it? Because, because, not because God didn't want them to, because, because, they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. And they stumbled at that stumbling stone. They stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. And whosoever, tell me, Whosoever shout it out, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. The promise is for whosoever. Their stumbling block is that they didn't fit into that whosoever they didn't believe. And it was unbelief that caught them off. I pray it will not happen to you. Somebody said, Amen. Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. Reading from verse 19. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. They could not enter in because of unbelief. We'll come to point number two. The self-righteousness in Israel's religion. They were religious. But the center and the circumference of the religion was all self-righteousness. Welcome to Romans chapter 10. This Romans chapter 10 will divide to three parts. Number one, the filthiness of self-righteousness. The filthiness of self-righteousness. Verses 1 to 5. Number two, the faith for supernatural righteousness. The faith for supernatural righteousness. Verses 6 to 13. Number three, the failure of superficial righteousness. The failure of superficial righteousness. Verses 14 to 21. Romans chapter 10 verse 1. The filthiness of self-righteousness, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Now, how would he pray for Israel if God, if he knew that God had already predestinated them to be lost? That the Israel of that time, the Israel of that generation, there's no way, there's no prayer that could make them to be saved. Because God had determined, that's what some people say, from all eternity, that that person will not be saved. If Paul knew that, why would he be praying for what he knew? God had decided they will not do it. No, there's nothing like that. There's nothing like that. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness are going about to establish their own righteousness, self-righteousness. They have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. 
For God, for Christ is the age of the law, for righteousness unto everyone that believeth. For Moses describes the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But you know, because of their self righteousness, that's why they couldn't believe. They said, Oh, we'll get to heaven. We're children of Abraham. We're circumcised. He knows us. He knows we're special. And what we do by ourselves will earn salvation. And Paul was so concerned about them. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 22. Acts chapter 22, verse 3. It says, I am very lame, man, which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city of a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous. I bear them record, I bear them record. They have zeal, but not according to knowledge. I was zealous toward God, as ye are, as ye all are this day. But they were zealous because they projected that self-righteousness, thinking that will be enough. But the prophet said, I told them earlier, it's not enough. It's filthy, Isaiah chapter 64, reading from verse 6. Isaiah chapter 64, reading from verse 6. But we are all as an unclean thing, circumcised, unclean. Having the oracles of God, unclean. Descendants of Abraham, unclean. And all our righteousnesses as filthy rags, the filthiness of self-righteousness. And we all do fade as he leaves. And our iniquities, like the wind, are taking us away. It tells us in chapter 57. I say, chapter 57, verse 12. I will declare thy righteousness and thy works, for they shall not profit thee. I will declare thy righteousness, self-righteousness, and thy works, the works of the law, but they shall not profit you. They will not give you, gain you life eternal. We'll come to part two in chapter 10. The faith for supernatural righteousness. In Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. Chapter 10 rather. Chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 6. Showing them now. Righteousness is straightforward we don't have to go to the altar to the temple to sacrifice to bring a goat to bring a lamb and we don't have to bring the price of atonement anymore all this old covenant everything is cancelled now it doesn't want burnt offering and all those things are useless in granting us righteousness there is righteousness divine there's righteousness supernatural. There is righteousness coming from the throne of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. In chapter 10, verse 6, but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That he is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what says it? The word is nigh thee. Even in thy mouth and in thine heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart. That God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. That's it. That's how it comes now. That's how it comes. It's as easy as that. You look at Christ on the cross of Calvary. 
that he died for you to take away your sin you look at christ on the cross of calvary that he bore your shame he bore your suffering he bore the punishment of your sin and then you say lord jesus i know you did that for me i'm going to identify with you crucified with him and buried with him he says on that basis it is that faith that grants us that righteousness now for what the heart verse 10 man believeth unto righteousness and what the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture says whosoever Whosoever, whosoever, Joe Gentile, whosoever, literate or illiterate, whosoever, uh, the circumcised or not circumcised, whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, between the Jew and the Gentile. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever, Look at that again. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I pray we'll take that promise of God unto everybody we can find in Jesus' name. If you'll do it, give me a good amen. amen. Acts of the Apostles, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 38. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, I was looking at verse 38, the way of salvation and the path to righteousness. That simply now, whosoever among the Jewish nation, whosoever among the Gentiles will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We're looking at uh, chapter 2 from verse 38, and then Peter said unto them, repent. And be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the removal remission cleansing re redemption of your sins and then it says and you shall receive the gift of the holy ghost for the promises unto you and to your children and to them that are far off those are the gentiles even as many as the lord our god shall call and with many other words did he testify and exhort saying save yourselves from this unto all generation. Then they that gladly received this word were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in many prayers. But they were saved. They were born again. They were children of God. And they got the righteousness of God. And it is not by works. It's not by circumcision. It's by putting their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 35. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Not circumcision. Jesus not going back to river jordan jesus and it is not becoming a proselyte he preached unto him jesus and as they went on their way they came unto a certain water and the and the eunuch said see here is water what does hinder me to be baptized and philip said and philip said, and philip said if thou believest with all thine heart is the way of faith how do we have righteousness? Supernatural righteousness. Righteousness divine. Righteousness coming from above. It says, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And he went down, both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch. And he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught him with Philip, that, and that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. He went on his way rejoicing. The joy of salvation. Chapter 10, chapter 10 of the Acts of the Apostles. The way to not have the righteousness, supernatural righteousness coming from on high. He tells us in chapter 10, verse 43, To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him should have, should receive remission of sins, forgiveness of sin, cleansing of sin, removal of his sin. Acts of the Apostles chapter 16. 
We're reading from verse 30. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. We're reading from verse 30. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And he said, and he said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thine house. And he spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, and all his straightway. And when he had brought them into the house, he said, meet before them, and rejoice, look at this, believing in God with all his house. Believing in God. We'll come back to Romans chapter 10. The final part of chapter 10, the failure of superficial righteousness. The failure of superficial righteousness. Chapter 10, verse 14. How then shall they call on him? In whom they have not believed. And how shall they believe in him? Of whom they have not heard. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. And bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not only obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed that report, so then faith cometh by hearing. Not by circumcision. Faith cometh by hearing. Not by becoming a proselyte, following after the Jews. Faith cometh by hearing, not by tradition. Faith cometh by hearing, not by feeling. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily. Their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First, Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation will I anger you. What is, what is saying there is, they rejected, they rejected, and rejected over and over. And God said, all right, I will provoke you to believe, because the jealousy there is that you'll give that salvation to the Gentiles. The people they thought were nobody. The people they thought were non-entities. The people they thought they were only wood for the fire of hell. I'll give them forgiveness. I'll give them redemption. I'll give them salvation. I'll come to a relationship with them. I will love them. I will show them mercy. I will have compassion on them so that they will say, look at the gift of grace given to the unworthy Gentiles and we, who are the children of Abraham, we have nothing. That's the provoking to jealousy there in verse 20. But Isaiah was, is very bold and said, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel it says all day long. I have stretched forth my hands. I want them saved. That's why I stretched off my hand. I want them to come back. That's why I stretched forth my, my, my hand. I've not predestinated them to be lost in hell. That's why I stretched out my hand. I want everyone to be saved. I'm not willing that any should perish. That's why I stretch out my hand. But then it says, unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. They will not accept. They will not receive. And so their doom is because of the choice they made by themselves. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1. In Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. Let us therefore fear. 
lest the promise be left us of entering into his rest, any of you shall seem to come short of it. For unto us what the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not be mixed with faith and them that heard it. Not be mixed with faith and them that heard it. Verse 11. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fail. He says, don't just sit back and say, God will do what he will do. If God means me for salvation, he'll give it to me. If God wants me to get to heaven, he'll make a way. And so I just fall back. He said, no, no, you must believe. You must take a proactive attitude and say, he wants me saved. He wants eternal life for me. Let us labor, therefore, to enter in into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. We'll come to point number three, chapter 11. The sure redemption of Israel's remnant. The sure redemption of Israel's remnant. Here, he tells us that Yet a remnant of the children of Israel will be saved. A remnant will come to the faith. A remnant will come out of perdition. And they will enter paradise eventually. We're looking at Romans chapter 11. Again, we divide this Romans chapter 11 to three parts. Number one, the favorable recognition of a remnant. The favorable recognition of a remnant. Verses 1 to 10. Number two, the fearful rejection of reprobates. The fearful rejection of reprobates. Verses 11 to 24. Number three, the final redemption of a repentant remnant. The final redemption of a repentant remnant. We're looking at chapter 11, the first part. The favorable recognition of a remnant. I say then, as God cast away his people, God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Know ye not, watch ye not, what the scripture says of Elias, Elijah, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars. And I, have, I am left alone and they seek my life. But what says the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. He said, let's go back to our history. When we think everybody is lost, everybody is serving idol, bear, abomination. And even Elijah thought he was the only one left. But God said, no, I've reserved to myself, there's a remnant, 7,000 men that have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time, even so then, after the cross, even so then, after Jesus had come and sacrificed on the cross of Calvary, even so then, at this present time, also, there is a remnant, the rec favorable recognition of a remnant. There is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it's no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more of grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel has not obtained that which is seeketh for. But the election has obtained each. And the rest were blinded according as it is written. God has given them the spirit of slumber. Eyes that they should not see, now you understand. And ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David says, let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and 
recompense unto them let their eyes be dark that they may not see and bow down their back all the way it's talking about the remnant that a remnant shall be saved a remnant shall be saved Hosea chapter 9 Hosea chapter 9 I'm reading from verse 17 Hosea chapter 9 verse 17 it says in Hosea chapter 9 verse 17 my God will cast them away because they did not hearken unto him not because he predestinated them. My God will cast them away. Not because from all eternity he never wanted them to be saved. No, look at this. Because they did not hearken unto him. And they shall be wondrous among the nations. But even then, in Joel chapter 2, verse 32. Joel chapter 2, verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever, here is the word again, that whosoever, God is not willing that anybody should perish, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said. And in the remnant, in the remnant, in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Micah chapter 2. The Lord was calling them by the prophets and telling them to come out of unbelief and telling them to come out of their stage of apostasy. It's saying in Micah chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 10. Micah chapter 2, verse 10. Arise ye and depart. He wanted them to be saved. Arise ye and depart. He wanted to show them favor. Arise ye and depart. For this is not your rest because it is polluted. And it shall destroy you, even with his sword destruction. Look at verse 12. I will surely assemble, O Jerusalem, o, o Jacob, all of thee. I will surely gather the remnant, the remnant, the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as a sheep of Bozrah, as a flock in the midst of, the, of their fold. And they shall make great noise by reason of the multitude of men it tells us in chapter 5 chapter 5 micah chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 3 micah chapter 5 verse 3 therefore will i will he give them up until the time that she which travails has brought forth then the remnant the prophets knew, the prophets knew that there will be a remnant that will repent, a remnant that will call upon the Lord. And they said, then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. And then he tells us in verse 4, and he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord. And in the majesty of the name of the Lord is God. And they shall abide. For now shall be shall he be great unto, unto the ends of the earth. We're coming back to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. The fearful rejection of reprobates. Romans chapter 11. We're looking at verse 11. Romans chapter 11. We're reading it from verse 11. Here it tells us. I say then. Have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles. For to provoke them to jealousy. So that they will seek what they had rejected. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world. And the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles. How much more? Their fullness. For I speak unto you Gentiles, in so much as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. And if by any means I be provoked to emulation, them which are of my flesh, the Israelites, that I might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruits be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the lump and if the roots be holy, 
so are the branches and if some of the branches be broken off and thou be a wild olive tree were graft in among them which and, and with them partakers of the root and the fatness of the olive tree boast not gentle boast not at all worshiper boast not convert from the darkness of the gentle world boast not against the branches but if thou boast thou bearest not the root but the root thee that will say then the branches were broken up that I might be grafted in well because of unbelief they were broken up not because of predestination not because of God's election not because God didn't want them to be saved he says well because of unbelief they were broken up and thou standest by faith be not high minded for fear for if God spared not those Jews the natural branches take heed lest they also spear not thee behold therefore the goodness and the severity of God on them which fail severity but toward thee goodness if thou continue toward thee goodness grace righteousness acceptance if thou continue in his goodness otherwise tell me thou also shall be broken up and they also if they abide not still in unbelief it's not predestination it's either you have faith and the faith you follow through with obedience and faithfulness or you don't have faith and then you're rebellious it says and they also if they abide not still in unbelief shall be grafted in shall be grafted in for god is able to graft them in for if thou wert cut out of the olive tree which is wild by nature our graft contrary to nature into a good olive tree how much more shall these would be the natural branches the graft into their own olive tree it says they were rejected but you know why they were rejected because of their unbelief you know why they were rejected because they will not follow the way of the lord they deliberately chose the way of evil jeremiah chapter 6 in jeremiah chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 16 jeremiah chapter 6 reading from verse 16 thus says the lord stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls you wanted them saved you wanted them restored he wanted them to have rest. He wanted them to have eternal life. He shall have rest for your souls. But they said, that's why they were rejected. They said, we will not walk therein. Verse 17. Also, I said, watchmen over you, saying, hacking to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hacking. That's why they were rejected. Look at Bastachi. Bastachi. In Bastachi, reprobate silver shall men call them because the Lord has rejected them. They rejected, and so the Lord said, That's all right. I reject you too. Hosea chapter 4. Hosea chapter 4. Reading from verses 6 and 7. Hosea chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. In Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, see what the Lord is saying about the people. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, not predestination. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because, because, because that was rejected knowledge. I also will reject thee the rejection started from them you have rejected knowledge i also will reject thee that thou shall be no priest to me seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy god i also will forget thy children as they were increased so they sinned against me 
Therefore, because of their sin, no predestination. Therefore, because of their wrong choice, not election. Therefore, I will change their glory into shame. Verse 17, Ephraim, Israel, the covenant people of God. Ephraim is joined unto idols. Let him alone. You see, that, that's the fearful rejection of the republic. But then Paul, the apostle, con, con, concludes this section by telling us there'll be a final redemption for the repentant remnant. We're coming to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 25. It says in verse 25, For I will not have your brethren that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles becoming. That is, God is dealing with the Gentiles now. He's bringing the Gentiles in multitudes all over the nations. He's bringing them into the kingdom. And then when that time of the Gentiles, when the time is fulfilled, then they will face Israel in verse 26. So all Israel shall be saved. The remnant, the remaining. As it is written, they shall come out of Zion, the deliverer, I shall turn away on godliness from Jacob. For these are the covenant unto them. When I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the father's sakes. For the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past... I have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so, have these also now not believed that through your mercy, they also may obtain mercy. For God has concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. It tells us a remnant still shall be saved. Let's look at Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah chapter 12. We're looking at verse 10. Zechariah chapter 12. And we're reading from verse 10. In verse 10, yeah, the Lord is saying the time is coming. When they will repent, when they will turn away from their sin. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. It tells us that the spirit of grace, supplication, will come upon them. Look at verse chapter 13, verse 9. Chapter 13, verse 9. And I will bring the third part, remnant, remnant. I'll bring the third part through the fire. I will refine them as silver is refined. I will try them as gold is tried. And they shall call on my name, and I will hear them, and I will say, I will say to that remnant, it is my people. And they shall say, it is, he is my God. Hosea chapter 3, verse 5. Hosea chapter 3, we're reading from verse 5. In Hosea chapter 3, verse 5, afterward shall the children of Israel return. Afterward, when the time comes again, shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. We come to Romans chapter 11 from verse 33. Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has first given to him? 
and it shall be recompensed unto him again for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever to whom be glory forever we're Gentiles, but thank God we have come into faith. We have come into the kingdom. We have come into the favor of God. And the Lord is saying, look at those first recipients of the favor of God because of disobedience and because of their unrighteousness. Some believe and don't believe they have been cut off. And now you are in. I pray God will keep you in. Jude, Jude. Reading from verse 20, G chapter 1, verse 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves or your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And then he says in verse 24, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Able to keep you from falling able to keep me from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise god our savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and ever that glory will walk in your life the keeping power of the Lord will keep you until the very end in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and thank the Lord for what he has revealed unto us. What he has revealed unto us. The children of Israel, they forfeited their relationship because they were not wise to remain in faith. Now God has called you in and you have his righteousness. You have his redemption and you have his favor and you have his grace and you have his power. Let's be wise. Remain in the circle of the love and the mercy and the compassion of God. And that God is able. He'll keep you true and faithful to the very end.